this is Matt AG, and today we're going to be talking about five things uh, that are cons when living at Humber College and Etobicoke as a student. The first thing is about searching for when you're just arriving and searching for rooms uh, or either at residence or off campus near Humber. Uh, you have to know that there are only two sites to look for for good deals uh, for to look for rooms. The first site is uh, KG.com or KGG. You can find a bunch of good uh, rooms that uh, either landlords or tenants post to when you're looking for roommates. Or you could go on placesforstudents.com and that's the site where it's basically like a university site for colleges in Ontario. I don't know if it's for all of Canada, but it's I know it's for your colleges in Ontario. And it's what I use for most of uh, the rooms that I had rented over my two years since I've been here. It's not too expensive, but cheap options that you can afford as a student. Even though the con about that is the things that you can afford on that set on those sites, they have apartments where it's like a six bedroom, six seven bedroom house, and if you can if you can afford to live with six people in the house, go for it. Uh, six people have been living with six people in a house. Office and in both houses that I've been living in, we've been having either problems with either the roommates or problems with the, the, the everyone, me included, not doing their part as for chores. For example, they would leave uh, food in the sink and make the sink clog, or they would leave the trash in the kitchen and not take it out or uh, just leave uh, their boxes in the living room and wait for the living room to come take it out. Um, so that's, that's like the cons of living with like six people. Even though you could check in the schedule, doesn't mean that they'll follow it. The other option is that when you confirm rooms, uh, the residents are hungry. But the residence at Humber is uh, much more expensive. Uh, you have to you have to pay for a residence for like a tiny bedroom with just one twin bed, a desk, and a drawer. Uh, but then you have to pay extra for food. Uh, you have to pay like a, an actual milk plan. and that's like over over a thousand dollars if you get the milk plan. and then. There's also, if you do go on the single route, you have to share a bathroom. And sharing a bathroom with like 10, 15 people in a single uh, floor is disgusting. And like, people will just leave like air uh, on, the, on the floor and just not take care of the bathroom. If you're ready to a city and you don't know anyone, I would recommend it to befriend people and then when you finish the year, move out with the people that you befriended and go into a room together and share the room together. Um, that's what I did for my second year. And for the second, Second con is that some of the houses you find, the landlords doesn't allow you to does it doesn't allow you to get a package with utilities. You have to pay for yourself. For example, in my last house, I had to get my own Wi-Fi, uh, and that sucked because although I got my own Wi-Fi. Uh, and I split it with like different people um, that lived in the house. 
sometimes it didn't end up paying and I had to really learn it about it and yeah that's like one of the cons of, cons of it getting your own wi-fi and then uh, in this house uh, you can't you can't it's not free laundry you have to pay two freaking dollars for a single thing of laundry and sometimes the laundry doesn't even work and you have to redo it again and that's like four dollars i know one of my roommates he had to I won't try to pay six dollars because the machine didn't work the second time and you had to redo it the third time. So that's one of the cons here. Uh, the second con, uh, other than searching for rooms, is uh, the landlord. You have to be careful of your landlord. I've, uh, I've, I've had some bad experiences with roommates and landlords. There was one point where we had me and two other two or three two, two to three other roommates had to call the cops on one of my roommates because her boyfriend just uh, started kept starting a started a fight with one of our roommates and he got really bad and he just he just he was not comfortable living there anymore uh, so yeah you have to be careful with like who you choose to live with what type of landlord you want to live with for example my landlord uh one of the things i didn't like about him was that he would like it's, it's in toronto i don't know about anywhere else but in toronto it's illegal for a landlord to come to your place of residence without telling you 24 hours before and my landlord, I would be about to go to class and he comes with uh, with like tenants to look at, at the empty rooms and expect me to live with him. And he just comes without telling us. That that was like one of the reasons I left the house. We just kept doing it. There was another time where one of our fridge uh, broke down. He didn't come to fix it until about two or three days later and then he did tell us that he was coming to replace he was replacing the fridge so when I, I, I woke up uh, with him calling me and telling me that uh, to let him open the door because he was there and he had a new fridge he replaced the fridge but then he never took the old fridge the old fridge just took an entire spot in the kitchen and he just never came to to like to the day that i was it was still there when i left that's how bad that's how bad it is uh so yeah the be careful of your landlords there was another incident that i heard about when i was searching for uh houses and rooms to live in one of the tenants in the house that i looked up with my friends, told us about this one incident where the basement of the house flooded and the landlord never came to fix it. So yeah, if you have a chance, speak with the tenant to see how um, the landlord is and if, it, if, it is, if the landlord is comfortable to be with, if it's nice, if it's um accommodating especially if the rate of pandemic going on you would want the landlord to be accommodating when you don't really can't pay um the rent because either you lost a job or the money's coming in late uh, my landlord has been very nice very nice for that and i really i even enjoy talking to him on the phone he's very nice and he fixing it fixes things fast, so you want a landlord like that. Um, the third thing is the third con is the distance between uh, where between everywhere. Um, the closest, if you're gonna be living close to Humber, like five minutes away from Humber, the closest uh, grocery store you find is like 15-20 minute bus ride. Oh wait, 
and that's like uh, like around where I'm where I'm moving. It's like a ten minute walk to to get to like a cheap good grocery store. And the only thing that's closer to Hubbard is the hospital. Uh, they also have the arboretum where you can, there's a path where you can walk to go straight to Woodbine Mall. And there you'll find like a bunch of stores. Um, and yeah, the distance just to go downtown is like a, an hour, um, minimum an hour bus ride. To get to get downtown, uh, so you have to you have to first take the TTC to Kipling Station, and then Kipling Station to wherever uh, downtown you want to go, and just from uh, the TTC from Humber to Kipling Station, that's like a 30, 40 minute bus ride right there. Uh, so it'll take it, it's unless you have a car, it's very inconvenient to so walk around. You can't walk anywhere around here and yeah the fourth con is construction construction is happening all the time in the Tobico especially since the pandemic I've been like literally kind of construction started since back April 2020 and it's still happening now and because of the construction most uh, um, pedestrian what's the word I'm looking for pedestrian walk most most places where you can walk or close to off so you can even go to the nearest like uh, the panel to to get some like snacks to eat or just uh, yeah, it's very annoying. It, it's of it also uh, annoys me personally when there's construction and they move. Usually they move the bus stops if there's construction there, and they put it further, but they never post that they put it further anywhere. Uh, there's no announcement, nothing at all. So you have to find out. And sometimes I will just stay, like stand on the bus stop, and just my bus comes, and the bus just leaves to the bus stop in front, just because uh, I didn't have to wait another like 10, 15 minutes to uh, to get to the next bus stop that takes me to wherever I want to go. So you have to be careful there. And the last thing I want to talk about is safety. Itoriko, although it's a nice, slow, quiet place to be in, it's also not very safe in that hunger. I've had friends who have gotten mud uh, while walking around the area. Uh, um, which is basically like a small forest that they have and there's also been people that I heard about that have um, been getting uh, murdered there that I heard that there's one friend that I was talking to and he said that one of his friends had parked his car on the Humber parking lot and then when he came back to get the, to drive back home after your classes, his uh, his license plate was gone. So it was stolen. Uh, so yeah, it's not safe to walk around. Uh, I would say here, if you all carry a pepper spray. Uh, other than that, I recommend just driving or taking the bus, not walking around. Um, yeah, the, it's, it's very not safe. Although I did, I did live close to Humber. Um, it's fun like the first three years of college, but then you just get, you just get sick of them with six, six people in the house, um, having to, uh, pay 
extra money for larger Wi-Fi um, and also uh, having to travel very far just to get to the nearest grocery store because then your, your only option is to carry your bags of groceries on the bus or taking an Uber back which will be more expensive than going by bus um, and yeah that's my video for today if you uh, I'll be making a, a video on the pros of living uh, near Humber while you're going there and hope you guys